Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. It's Wednesday, which means new comic books are hitting shelves all across the world. Whether or not they're digital, physical, well, it's new comic book day. It's like the best day of the week. All right, we've got three new trades from Marvel. Marvel's hooked us up with three different trades of the many that are out this week from them. They're kind of varying from different times, different characters, and definitely different styles. Uh, we've got Carnage USA, Death of X, and the X Force, or X, sorry, X Factor Epic Collection, Genesis and Apocalypse. Let's go first with Carnage USA. I will straight up say I hate Carnage as a character. I despise him when he debuted in Spider Man. He's just one of the most irritating uh, characters. It's basically, we neutered Venom and we just needed to make more psychotic Venom and get back some killer out there because we kind of made Venom like this wishy washy good guy sort of thing. We got Carnage. Um, this story wasn't too bad, though. So it's Carnage USA, it collects issues 1 through 5 from Zeb Wells, Clayton Crane. It came out it a few years ago, if I remember right. It came out, well, this came out in 2017. Um, whatever. This came out a few years ago. I don't remember exactly when it came out. Um, the story is basically... Uh, Cletus Cassidy gets out of jail. What a shock. Villains always seem to do it. Goes into a town, takes it over, uh, basically turns all these people into carnages or holds them hostage, and some of the Avengers have to go in and save them. Uh, so it's kind of interesting in that we get this discussion or this like story about this uh, crazy guy who basically wants to watch see the world burn. Like it's that Joker thing from, you know, Dark Knight. Um, where, you know, what do you do with the bad guy who just wants to destroy the world? That is actually an interesting aspect. The story doesn't dive enough into that. It doesn't really come towards the end of the comic when it comes clear, like, that's really what it's about, is, like, what do you do with a dude like Cletus Cassidy, who is just a straight-up killer and a murderer and does horrible things and constantly gets out of jail. So, um, that's kind of cool. Like, it's a great concept. Just well, just wasn't enough of that. I think if there was more of that, that moral uh, discussion, it would have been just a very strong story. Uh, for the most part, though, it is basically uh, your run of the mill. You have to go stop Carnage, who is holding a town hostage. Story, nothing really all that new. There's some decent action in it. There's like this military unit who have uh, their own symbionts who have to go and stop them. There's some there's cool aspects to it, but overall. There's just something like slightly missing for me. Not going to mock it totally because, again, like I started off and said, I hate Carnage as a character. So for me to say it was enjoyable, I think says something. Uh, the things that are really good, though, is the art. Um, no, I don't want to do that because that's just like a spoiler because it's a, kind of a badass image and I don't want to spoil it. Um, the art is interesting like uh, it's painted i guess i would be the way to describe it i don't know quite the style like I, I really don't know what to describe the style i guess it's painted i like i see the style a lot it's just one of those i have no idea what even to qualify it as uh so it doesn't look like your typical comic which is cool uh so that really kind of stands out um but like there's some there is some cool aspects you know wolverine covered in Carnage symbiotes is uh, a neat idea that I don't think we've really seen before, so it's not that bad. Uh, the retails for $19.99, so price-wise, I'm not totally digging it with you know, five issues. You're saving a couple bucks on it. Um, you're getting covers in between the various chapters. The covers are actually pretty cool. I remember seeing these in the store when this series came out and it almost had me on the covers just because I liked them so much and they played off of like this patriotic icon iconography that it would dug. Uh, there's also variant covers that are inside. Uh, but that's really about it. There's not many uh, extras at all. So this is one like if you're a diehard Carnage fan if you haven't read this Go for it. If you kind of like the idea of a uh, superpower serial killer, what do you do with that? Go for it. Uh, but overall, like out of the, 
out of the three choices, I'm kind of I'm kind of wishing out on that on this one. Uh, it's not that bad. Actually, I'm gonna say this is probably the medium out of the three. So we'll go with this. This is the this is the medium one. This is this is the one I'm gonna put the medium in the middle. The reason why I think this one is less than that one. Um, all right. So Death of X, fairly recent. Um, collects issues one through four of Death Death of X. Mostly written, or er, sorry, it's written by Jeff Lemire and Charles uh, Soul. Tons of art uh, artists: Aaron Cooter, Javier Garon, uh, Jay Liston, Cam Smith, Scott Hanna, Mary Hollowell, Jay uh, David Ramos, Jason Keith, Will Quintana, Matt Miller, Andrew Crossley. Seventeen ninety nine, four issues. <coughs> um, I just noticed we're actually quoted on the back of it. I don't know if that's my quote or not. It'd be pretty funny if it was, and I'm panning this. Um, the story is the prelude, basically, to the uh, Inhumans versus X-Men storyline that's currently going on in the Marvel Universe. Uh, the the big story going currently is Inhumans are battling the X-Men who are trying to sur survive because of the Terrigen Mist that's flowing around the planet, poison to, to mutants, killing them. So the X-Men have to do something about it. So this is kind of the prelude up to that. Like, we knew there was this fallout between the Inhumans and the X-Men. We didn't know why. We knew Cyclops had died. We don't know why. This is all the answers to that. So this just fills in basically a lot of gaps of things we don't know. A lot of characters that we haven't seen for a while are in here and explains that. Basically, who's alive, who's dead, this is answering a lot of those questions. And for that, it's good. Like, if you are a X-Men completist, you want to know what the hell's going on, this I recommend because of that. Uh, if there anything really vital in this, somewhat, there are some twists and turns towards the end that actually make it a really interesting story, but up to that, it's not much. It kind of like a. It would be like an M. Not Night Shyamalan film where like 99% of it is shit, and then it's all about the twist. And you're like, oh, that was an awesome movie because of the twist. Well, no, 99% of it's still shit. This isn't quite that bad like that, but you can hopefully see what I'm saying. Um, the art. I remember being an issue with it. It was really inconsistent from issue to issue with a lot of different artists. It's not too shocking on that. So, um, there's that, but, like, overall, it's one of those, like, it is clearly a prelude to the big event. Uh, this would be, like, a four-issue, zero-issue that Marvel kind of puts out. Marvel puts out a lot of, like, here's this a big event, here's the zero-issue, and now the big event. This is, like, a long zero-issue in my mind. It's not horrible, it's just... Could have been better. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be very diplomatic and say it could have been better. Um, as again, there was some really good stuff about it. There was a lot of stuff I disliked. Uh, overall, though, things were kind of. It was a little. Yeah, you can see that I'm. I'm a little torn on this one. Uh, out of three, though, I kind of. I would say this is the least to get. And here's like a perfect example of the art. Like the art's just really bad in this. I mean, the characters just look odd. We'll, we'll be nice and leave it at that. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what else to say on that. It's just, it is what it is. Uh, as far as extras, there are, and I, you know, I love Jeff. The kicker to me, the thing that bothered me the most about this, Jeff Lemire is one of the best writers out there in comics period today. I mean, he consistently puts out some of the best written comics for years now. Um, and does amazing work. So for this to be underwhelming was kind of shocking. Charles Soule is a hell of a writer as well. I mean, he does amazing work. His Daredevil is fantastic. Uh, some of the, the, a lot of the indie, not some of the, um, all the independent stuff that he's done has been fantastic. I'm totally blanking on the other stuff he's written for Marvel, sorry. Uh, when he was doing Swamp Thing, it was really good. So the two of them are amazing writers, so there was something about this that just wasn't clicking. Now what's interesting though is the Inhumans vs. X-Men storyline is actually really good. Uh, and I'm the first to say Marvel's events have been horrible for these last few years. But the X Inhumans, like, if I get the trade of that, I'm going to be praising that thing. So yeah, like go check that out. This on the other hand, just it's something is really off. I don't know if it was the art, if it's the writing plus the art. Something didn't work for me. As far as what you get, you get covers. 
Uh, and then you get some variants in the back. I don't want to give away the twist, so that, there's that. So you get some variants, some pencils to the variants. I think part of it, I just don't like Aaron Cooter's um, art. Sorry. Like, I feel like it's a jerk thing to say, but I'm just not a fan. Uh, some cool variants like that. There's some connecting variants that were actually really neat. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of variants in here. It's a lot of art to check out. Basically, you know, if you haven't read it, you're wondering what's going on, go with it. There's a nice twist at the end that really kind of changes up uh, a couple characters, how you're going to think about them, especially with Inhumans versus X-Men. Now, the, the twist hasn't come up yet. I believe it's probably going to come up next issue, so kind of going to be a key thing at some point, and there gets into be a little bit of philosophical debate at that point. I, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get out of that. Alright, so this one's a blast from the past. I, I haven't read these in God knows how long. Um, I mean, we're talking about when I started reading comics, basically, is, is some of this stuff. I have original copies of a good chunk of this sitting in uh, storage. Yeah. There's like 60 long boxes in storage. There are some originals uh, of this in there. Alright, so we got X-Factor, Genesis and Apocalypse, part of the Epic Collection. Epic is definitely the key word here. So this is Volume 1, 1986. It includes Avengers 263, Fantastic Four 286, X-Factor 1 through 9, and the Annual Number 1, Iron Man Annual Number 8, Amazing Spider-Man 282, and some material from Classic X-Men Number 8 and Number 43. I'm just going to read the back because it's going to be way easier to do that. So when Jean Grey is found alive with a little help from the Avengers and Fantastic Four, she re reunites with the rest of Xavier's original class to form X-Factor. But if Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Beast, Angel, and Iceman face new enemies, Tower and Frenzy, little do they realize the villains are part of an alliance of evil led by Apocalypse. They'll fight Iron Man and Spider-Man, encounter uncanny foes such as Bulk and Glowworm, and take on old sparring partners in Freedom Force. But there's no question who will rise to the role of X-Factor's arch nemesis. Story of N. <coughs> Sorry, sick. Uh, story of N. Sabanura begins here. That's the thing that's really cool about this. If you want really the origin of Apocalypse, this is this is right here. Like if you saw X-Men Apocalypse and you're like, I want to go check out Apocalypse and comics and figure out where he started. Here you go. Uh, now, there isn't tons of him in there. I'm going to warn you straight up. Like, this isn't straight Apocalypse stories. They're battling Apocalypse. So if you want that sort of thing, there's way other comics in there. But if you want the origin of him starting, uh, a lot of these characters who wind up being classic characters, their uh, debuts, it, this is it right here. Uh, this is the return of the original X-Men. They had been gone for some time. Remember, we got the replacement of like Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, all of them formed these, the new X-Men in... I forgot what year it was. 73? 79? Somewhere around there? 73? Whatever. Um, and the... There was some time before these characters reunited and were brought back. Everyone thought Jean Grey was dead. So, din 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 we also get the lead up to, you know, the whole Phoenix Saga that will come at some point. Pretty big key stuff there. That's hinted at in this. Um, so this is some pretty classic, awesome comics. Um, I mean, okay, so I'm going to go through the writers. Roger Stern, John Byrne. Uh, Bob Layton, Bob Harris, Louise Simonson, Tom DeFalco, Chris Claremont, Jackson Guise. Pencils and Breakdowns, John Bushima, John Hearn, uh, Jackson Guise, Keith Pollard, Paul Neary, Bob Layton, Rick Leonardi, Mark Silvestri, Terry Shoemaker, John Bolton, Mike Collins. Anchors are known, colorists are known, letters are like, these are all names you're going to know. So this is some of like the top creators of the time, some of the best creators ever, period, which says a hell of a lot. So this is really, it's like, if you want to go back and check out some old school comics, X-Factor number one, for instance, yeah, it doesn't really get much better than this. I mean, there you go. Um, it's, this is a, pretty awesome at thirty four ninety nine. You're getting one, two, so that's 11, 12, 13, like 15 or 16-ish comics somewhere around there. Um, now, obviously, price of comics have gone up. So you're looking at like two bucks, three bucks an issue, not even two and a half bucks an issue, which is not bad at all. 
Uh, let's see here. Extras. Yeah, you get like some old school stuff like that. Old Marvel Age magazine material, which is pretty neat. This is the part I actually thought was really, really neat. That are like old pencils, old school pencils of the pages within. That was something I really, really digged about this. So, uh, out of the three of them, I love this. I mean, if you want a good collection to go back and check out some classic comics, like here you go. This is an absolute solid edition to any collection. You can go check out the original X-Factor, Apocalypse's Origin, and a hell of a lot more all here. It, I mean, it's classic comics. Best way of putting it. This is as classic as classic as they come. <clears throat> so you got three options from Marvel this week. Some interesting ones. You know, clearly if you are into the X stuff, you got some good, you know, some very different options, some new, some old. Uh, and then Carnage for the Spider-Man fans. Uh, thanks again, Marvel, for the hookup of them. You can go check out these comics at your comic book shop today. They're going to be in big box stores, I believe, in like two weeks is the way Marvel works. So it's going to be like March, whatever the Tuesday is, two weeks from now. Um, <coughs> if you uh, are looking for a local comic book store, we have a link underneath this video. You can go put in your zip and it'll go help find your local comic book shop. Please go support your local comic book store first and foremost. If you don't have a local comic book shop or can't get to it for whatever various reasons and you want to order it online, we do have some links below this video to help you out with that. There are affiliate links, so we do get a small percentage of that, but by doing that, you help support our site, so thank you very much for that. Uh, by just watching this video, thank you so much. You help support our site. So until next time, keep reading those comics. Make mine marvel and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.